Okay. Hi. Bye. Hi. <laughs> hey. So for those of you watching, it's actually been a little while since we spoke. I think the last time we had a conversation was sometime in the summer of 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's been a little while, but how are things going now? Good. Really good. Like, and tell me, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. I was just going to say, I'm excited to share about my journey working with you and about my journey through relationships and finding love and, and finding love with myself and all that, because I find once you can tune into it and you become aware of it, then it's a maintaining process like anything else, right? It doesn't just end once you're in a relationship. It actually amplifies. Right? Yes. So all your well, yeah. Comes up. <laughs> and before we went live, Sam and I were just saying like, we find this is such a good time to be having this conversation because there is so much fear and panic right now. And so to talk about like love, I think there is no better time to be talking yeah. about love. And, and even in the context of like the decisions that we're making to be like smart and safe, mm -hmm. you can do it from an energy of fear or you can do it from an energy of love. And so like yeah. today we woke up, Cedric was not feeling well. And we were like, let's keep him home. And it's not because we're afraid he's going to go out and get Corona and something bad might happen, but it's like love and protection for the masses. And it really does rely on each and every one of us. Right. So love is an inside job and you can like choose that perspective at any moment. And Sam has an amazing podcast and I was just listening to her interview with Gabby Bernstein. Um, just fucking badass. And I heard so you badass. saying that, that you were like, really aware in your interactions mm -hmm. with you know companies or with trevor or with friends and family to be choosing love mm -hmm. can you take us back to 2000 i think it was 2017 mm -hmm. when you and i first started working together maybe like summer or fall even earlier we met april 2017 because i know because i was pregnant yeah. and yeah um I just left ogilvy's you're right yes and mm -hmm. tell us about how how your love life was at that point and sort of what had been the patterns leading up to like you deciding, okay, I met, I met Diane at this event and I want to get in touch and start working with her. What was going on in your love life at that time? You know, it's really hard when you're in those in patterns to realize you're in a pattern or if you're in a tough space to realize you're in a tough space. And for me, my mindset at the time was, I've got my shit together. Like, I'm good. I've got my career. Um, I had just left my corporate job to pursue, um, sorry, let me put this one, do not disturb, to pursue the influencer world, the creator space full time. I was super excited. I felt like I have my life together. I got, you know, all these things. And now I'm ready for a man because I have all the, all, all the elements that you're supposed to have in order. So now I'm ready for someone. And I, I think the first thing I sort of came to you with was that I, I wasn't finding anyone that was suiting my life and everyone that I was finding was not available. Yes. That, that was, was, I don't know if you remember this. It was a big thing. So it was either I meet someone and then they move to a different place or it was either location wise unavailable or in a relationship unavailable. Um, or, you know, or just where they stand in their life or like age differences. There were so many things that were just, this is not the right person, but in another circumstance under another time. And that was really what I first came to you with and had to work through. And, and ultimately the issue was not that they were not in the right place. It was, they were not the right person for me, or I was not in the right place and seeing everything, you know, in the right light yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or in a light that is helpful, right? Like that's one of the main questions now I'm always mm -hmm. asking, like, is this helpful? Is this perspective helpful for you? Is this habit helpful? Then keep going. And if it's not, yeah. then let's find another point of view. Yes. Yeah. I remember and timing being a topic and even always. encouraging you to take more time, which I yeah. feel you've really gotten um like more handle on it for mm -hmm. any of us to say we perfected that would be a lie but like just that like taking time and slowing certain aspects of your life down is more a priority than perhaps it was when we first met 
Yeah, absolutely. For me, it's always been, I've always been a very fast paced person. I like my hobbies include, you know, fitness and working out and adrenaline and, um, you know, I'm a Virgo. I like to get my stuff done. I want it all organized. I just want to run through it. All right. On to the next thing. And through, you know, the resources that I had and you being one of those key ones and us working together, realizing that I did need to slow down. So it's interesting that timing was, mm -hmm. I knew that timing played a part in what I was facing and what my blockers were, but I couldn't quite place where it fell. And yeah. I didn't realize that that was with me. And now just in reflection, I have such an aversion to people that try to disrupt my timing and my slow time now, <laughs> which is funny because I couldn't find my own initially. Yeah. And now that I have, and we, we worked through that, even when I've noticed like Trevor or, you know, in our relationship, it getting too fast or too stressful. I'm like, whoa, there, I need to go back to what I know slows me down. Yeah. And I have an aversion to it, which is funny. That's so exactly. cool. And, and like such a life skill, right? It's like truly a life skill. Right. Um, is there anything that sticks out for you? in our time together at that beginning and then there was a bit of so we worked together and then we had a bit of time apart and then you you reconnected with trevor who was from your past yeah. is there something that you feel clicked for you in those initial sessions together that helped you sort of like manifest or call in trevor in the very first times or when we started working together when i started dating him I think so there's both because I'm thinking of like in the very first sessions where there was like some of those initial realizations and then yeah. when you and Trevor first started dating there were some fears that surfaced and so yeah. we started working together again so if nothing comes to mind let's say that kind of helped you manifest him or kind of the clarity like I remember we had done some work on vision yes yeah. and that was pretty enlightening was just to say oh like maybe what I want is actually different than what I thought I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes I think that's, that's something that definitely resonated with me when we were working together was you think that you want, you have this, this image of your life and this expectancy. And I think that's something for me that I hung on to. And I still do. These things don't just disappear. Like I hope anyone watching or listening doesn't realize that because that can be frustrating too. If they yeah. have, put in some of the work and gotten somewhere and feeling like, okay, I need to, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm still battling something. Um, they don't just go away. But I do think that I sort of lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> like like oh, um, being more clear about. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So I do think like identifying what you want for you, but first you need to know, your own values, who you are. And that was something that I had to work on. Like I said, I thought that I, I thought I knew who fit into my picture based on thinking who I thought I was right. and who I thought I was meant to be. And that's a very different thing than just embracing yourself and being your authentic self. And then the person that fits with that may look very different. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that Trevor is not the person that I viewed as being with um but it's just he serves me in so many ways than i at that time ever thought and looked for in a partner yeah because i got real and authentic about who i was and what i wanted and so much so that my body so that was right around the time when we started working together my body so my <laughs> i left work um, I left my corporate job. Things were getting super stressful. I was really sick. I had an aversion to it. I said, okay, I'm going to do my own thing. I had just ended like maybe a month or two before that a relationship with someone who had cheated on me. Um, and it was really toxic, like so toxic. You probably remember some of that, those parts, but um, I had thought, you know what, I'm just going to focus on work and dive straight into work and be extremely fast paced and heavy and avoid, <laughs> avoid, avoid, avoid. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting in a terrible accident, um, working out my concussion. And it was like, my body was just, I feel like everything was thrown at me 
And my body said, okay, cool it, like chill, go back to basics, go back to knowing who you are and build off of that. And so I had to do that in my career. I had to do that in my love life. Yeah. Yeah. And what a blessing. What a blessing. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. The hardships always turn out to be our biggest blessing. And when you and Trevor, so, so you, you got more clear and then you and Trevor reconnected and you started your relationship. And I remember you, some fears surfacing and you got in touch. So you're like, I think I need to have some sessions. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you remember how confusing that felt? Just that like fear that was really surfacing in those early days? Yeah. Yeah. It's the fear that every time you start something new or a new relationship, you it almost becomes more fearful once you identify patterns that you've built because you start thinking, am I, do- am I doing that again? Am I doing the same pattern? Am I, am I going to destroy this? Is it all on me? Is it like, you know, it's just so much. And that was what I was facing at the time coming to you. It was so much about, I'm going to ruin this. Yeah. You know what? I'm creating the same pattern. I'm making the same choices. Um, you know, is he going to cheat on me? Is he going to leave me like clinging, clinging, clinging? And it like doesn't happen at first. It's like it takes a month or two in a relationship. And then you're, you, you have this moment and I'm sure so many people listening can resonate mm-hmm. in like in a, after a couple months or whatever into the relationship where you go, Oh shit, this is working. <laughs> right. And now like, I'm start identifying and freaking out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that process, we worked through just letting go. Yeah. And I remember so many, so many things that you said to me. And every single time we had a session, feeling so much better. Mm-hmm. And having an outlet also is a really great thing because then you don't bring that stress and that um, that fear and that try to like control. Mm-hmm. into your day-to-day relationship and you can reflect back to okay diana said just trust let go release be calm and be still and let me observe actually sorry my favorite thing you ever told me was <laughs> watch watch sit back and watch yes. who they are and what they do that is my favorite thing honestly diana that you ever told me and i i do that all the time now still mm-hmm you know, like the, there's, there's coronavirus, there's economy issues right now. There's so many things going on. It's who is that person showing up as Mm -hmm. for me, for themselves? And it's sit back and, and, and watch, or what do they do when I'm feeling overwhelmed or, you know, Mm -hmm. who, who are they? Let them do what they're going to do and just watch it. Mm -hmm. That is the yeah. ultimate in letting go and surrendering because our tendency is to want to control how they respond mm-hmm. so that they can continue to fit the mold of the picture we want them to be because if they do something different, then it threatens our image. And then we're like, do I have to reconsider this relationship? Right. And you might, right? But you aren't you better off knowing Aren't you better off just knowing who the person is? And it's so true. I always say it's less about, I feel we've had this conversation before too. Obviously, when you have a conversation with your partner and you guys agree on some things and some changes, you want to see the changes being made. What's even more important than that is how they respond to you when you bring up hard stuff, Mm -hmm. right? Because making changes it's hard for all of us, including our partners, right? Like they're humans with their own patterns and their own ways and, and they're going to trip and get back up and they're going to, you know, like the way we all struggle to make changes in our lives. But what is really, really telling is how someone responds to you when you have a challenging conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really easy to forget that there's two moving factors. And to think, okay, you know, I'm the moving factor and this is who that person is in my life and that's who they are. That's who they're going to be. That's, you know, expecting that of them when there might be other 
stuff going on for them, or they might not deal with changes or whatever you're facing as well, or it might trigger something in them. And so I think that's probably more for people like later on, but that's even something I need to remind myself now of. I can't like Trevor can't be the Trevor. I decide he is Mm -hmm. every day Mm -hmm. when I'm like, well, I'm going to go and freak out about, you know, my stress or whatever you're facing or um, whatever it is you know, something with your company, with your home, anything, we all have our stuff. And you can't just expect them to be who you want them to be. They may have their own things. It might be something that affects both of you. Yeah. Once you're living together, you have like, we have a company together now. Like it's, it's, there's a lot of factors that move around and everyone has the right to digest the information or react as themselves. It's, I love that you bring that up because it's mm-hmm. a part that I think we often forget is just like we have insecurities and worries and stresses and things that, things that really take over our mind. So do our partners or your potential partner. And like, it brings me back to the early days of my relationship with Jack and like, there were things I didn't know were going down in his life because we just weren't yet at the place for him to feel so comfortable to share everything. And that was keeping him a little bit distant, very reliable and very consistent, but was unable to go past a certain point because he was worried about, Mm -hmm. will I be able to be a good partner to her in the face of this all? And I don't know that until we get close enough for me to understand, oh, that's, that's what was happening for you is you were also inside of your fears. Like we have our fear and we have like, we're either rooted in fear or we're rooted in love or somewhere in between. And just like we sometimes slip into that fear space, maybe his fear wasn't about, are we going to work? Is she going to cheat on me? But he had other fears that were still getting in the way. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's also, I think we forget as, as men and women, depending on your roles that you assume, like in our household, we have I wouldn't call it traditional roles at all, but like I'm very feminine and Trevor's very masculine. So we take on more traditional roles. Yeah. And we have very different fears than than men do naturally. If they're sitting in like their masculine energy, as we've spoken about so many times about yeah. female and masculine energy, we all have a little bit of both, right? But I like my fears are, oh my gosh, the house is a mess and, you know, different things that I might think of in my head and someone could just pop by or like my parents are coming over. Whereas his fears may be so, so different in that moment. And that may completely not at all even phase him. And if we don't communicate that as well, then we're on, we're seeing things differently and that's okay because we're very, everyone's very different. Yeah. Um, but especially if someone's extremely feminine, extremely masculine, you just, it's like, there's this game, <laughs> there's this game, it's a board game. Anyway, they like say, um, have you ever heard of like minds? I totally like told you this. Yeah. It's a ga- board game I called like, like actually <laughs> ladies should try, or men should try playing it with their partners because it's very interesting to see how you guys think. So there'll be like a sentence and you have to write a list down of all the things that relate to that sentence. It's probably a very fun exercise. I love this. With a partner. Yeah. So (laughs) sign me up. It looks like we're going to be spending two weeks at home. Yeah. Um, So this, anyway, this game. And so the best example I have is we were playing it with like family and stuff and it's things that make you cool. And so this happened with, with two of my cousins, but it was just hilarious the way different people think. So someone's writing, ice cubes, you know, like a cold bath or whatever, things that cool you down, cold water. And it's for the winning point. They're like, we got this, we got this. The other person writes the whole list down and the list is (laughs) sunglasses. (laughs) And they just, the brain, the thought, the train of thought was so different. And I think it's such a funny we were just, it was hilarious, of course. That's so funny because I I thought they were winning. When you said cool, I didn't think cold. I thought like, what makes me a badass? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, my business. You know, right. you think of all these things. All the amazing and, things about me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're supposed to get the most with the other person to to get points and match. So maybe it. it's a fun, 
it's a fun learning activity, just even if you're starting to see someone to understand how their thought process think. It's yeah. so true. And so how do you feel? What do you think are some of the things that you've really taken away from our work together, from the work that you've, mm -hmm. we all, when we work with the coach, we're generally still like reading, meditating, we're doing our own work. Mm -hmm. What is, what are some of the, like your, I don't want to say tips or tricks, but like your ways of helping Trevor understand what you're thinking or what you're going through? Mm -hmm. I mean, communication, we've worked through this so much together, you and I, and for me, I've, I always had a wall up around communication. Um, and people like, you cannot expect something of someone without that communication to be open. Yeah. And you can't allow someone to fully love you without showing them who you are. Mm -hmm. And that may be that may mean the bad stuff and I think that was the scariest part for me as well and for us to work through was this like bad things do happen or you know explosive fights do happen especially in the beginning or while you're working through getting to know someone and it's not always their fault the bad stuff can come can come from you you know your insecurities can come up and being honest and authentic and sharing as much as you can is probably one of the biggest changes that happened for me over the course of, of our work together and over the course of my relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I did that even, I think at the beginning we worked very closely through getting through my fears and it was very self-focused Yeah, and it was, I don't even know how I can, you know, trust in a relationship or I don't even know how I can not mess it up, like putting the blame on me and working through that. Um, and then about a year ago or so, a little bit over that, we worked through a lot of my fears that, okay, now we got to this point where we were moving in together. We were continuing our life and, and I was getting called out for not being completely open and authentic in my relationship and that was something that I had to work through yeah yeah with you <laughs> probably the most important thing and like the success factor especially in those like early stages and by early I mean like even like the first year yeah. like you're I mean, we're still early I consider it you know <laughs> yeah you are how long yeah. has it been now it's been about two years like two, yeah a little over two years yeah like the the effect of communication like direct, effective, honest, non-accusatory, raw communication is the way I see all the women I work with able to move through that like casual stage into something real and authentic with someone because you cannot build something mm -hmm. deep and authentic with someone if you're not willing to also go there in your conversations. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very logical, but it's also terrifying because terrifying. we've also seen examples that when we reveal too much, the person runs away, but there's a difference. And I think a lot of what we worked through together was like, peel back the layers let's work through the fears so that when you bring this thing to trevor it's not like loaded with all this other stuff it's like really the core of the issue right. and so you can just bring that like confidently knowing this is my truth and if you're not able to meet me there what do we have yeah and that's one of the biggest fears i had as well and i'm sure so many people uh okay well then i i sh I pull back these layers and you see me for who I truly am. And that fear can be in every, like I know a lot of people work with you through relationships that are not just, not just necessarily romantic relationships, right? It can be with themselves. It could be with family, showing people who you truly are, showing yourself who you truly are can be really, really scary. But at the end of the day, if that person doesn't want that, then you need to think of your for yourself first and foremost. Yeah. And that was something that is really scary, but it was real. We had to talk through. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to be me because in, I want a relationship that lasts. I want a relationship that is, you know, what everyone wants. I want marriage. You want to end up with the person at the end of the day. I want to grow old with him. If, 
if I can't show my true self now, who am I going to be in 10 years? Yeah. Right. And it, like when I started thinking about it for the long run, that was when there was all these things that it was like, okay, girl, you better get real. Yeah. Like there's no, I think you probably said that to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, and like you can't, you can't, you cannot, you cannot hide. And my question for you, because I know like some of the women watching, it's like, this is the scariest part is being honest about what you feel or what you want or something's bothering you. Maybe this is a broad question, but I'm going to go for it. Has it ever failed you in your relationship with Trevor to be honest? So he might not react amazingly from the get-go every single time, but in the end, are you thankful to yourself for speaking up? Yes, 100%. Um, my now, you know, the larger test sample. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know now that even if the reaction is not is not what I want, it's the right reaction long term probably for us. Or it may be, like I said, two moving pieces. People have, I'm sure, told every single person here watching or listening something that has made them react and freak out and react in a way that they didn't want and then later realize, oh, that that's that was a better choice. That was better for me. Or that was my ego or my fears reacting. So yeah, obviously there's some things that I can show him that are the real me and maybe they don't always go over well. I mean, now he's, I think he gets the, <laughs> the idea a lot more, but you know, at the beginning and at the end of the day, it always worked out for the better. Um, but something that I, that's, changed the most is the second I started showing him who I truly was, I became much more confident in it. Mm -hmm. And it was a muscle. Yeah. And I was able to share who I was with him, accept who I am with myself. Because I thought, oh, hang on, he still loves me. Hang on, wait, he loves me more? Oh, that, oh, hang on. I'm, you know, that's, that was a shock for me. And in my business, I grew more confidence in my communication. It's true. There was a correlation. You were being more okay. honest across the board. I remember that. On, on social media, on, for people watching who don't know who I am, I have, I'm an influencer. I, you know, I write a blog, I have a podcast, like yeah, I'm really out there all the engaged time. following. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really hard. Well, you can't have an engaged following if you're not being yourself um, and true. And that shifted as well because I felt like, well, no, I know, I, I know, you know, I did that and I saw love from it before. Yeah. And it sort of trickled to all areas of my life. Yeah. I remember that being part of like your homework when, like when we were working together too. Yeah. Like, How are you going to be more honest about this? in your post because people in influencer it's it there's a lot of responsibility attached to that role yeah um and if we only show one side then we really do like our, our followers or readers or watchers a disservice because then it seems so unattainable but if we show all the aspects they love us more and it's the same with our partners they love us more because it shows like the tenderness and the fear and the love and the hope and all the facets that make us a complete human. Otherwise, like your partner cannot get to the truth of who you are if you don't show it. They're only able to love part of you. So they can't love you wholly because they haven't seen you wholly, right? Yeah. So good. And I, you feel like, you know, you can never feel truly like someone's on your side and loving you fully if deep down you know you haven't been your authentic self right you just I feel like you would feel a sort of 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 lack in that love and in that relationship knowing they don't really that you, know me. yeah they don't really know me and that's it's sort of like you know fake it till you make it but that doesn't work in relationships especially if you move in together oh yeah <laughs> there's no hiding at that point there's no hiding what would you say was the most helpful thing to have someone like me? So me and whoever else, cause we all have 
people in our lives in different ways. Like Gabby Bernstein is a huge influence for you as well. But working directly with someone like me, what was the most helpful about having me in your corner? Because I really, you know, like I'm so in your corner when we work together um, during all the moments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having someone that can, that you can speak to that is outside of the problem um, that is an expert in understanding those same problems that you're facing as well. And to me, working with you was initially as a love coach and more effective than general therapy or like life coaching or whatever, because that was what I needed. And I felt called to heal something mm. and to have someone that understood it from a loving perspective and the word love and relationships and everything comes back so, so much. Like even my biggest, the p biggest people that have helped me yourself, Gabby, have all been about love. And I knew for me, like I just trusted that that was, where I needed to heal. That was what I was being called to. Um, and you, you know, your stuff, like you, the, the best part is there was no judgment. You just really heard me and I never felt ashamed to tell you anything, um, to, you know, to cry, to be real with you, to say, I feel like shit or this happened or, oh my gosh, my relationship's over, you know, this <laughs> this is the insecurities that I'm facing. And I never, I never felt any judgment. I never felt any uncertainty. And I always knew that you were there to, with the best intentions to help me get through it and like to choose love again and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's so beautiful. Like, to be on this side of the equation is like, it's a responsibility. It's a gift. It's an honor, like to witness someone like you, to witness your journey from like first coming to me and saying like, I'm always meeting these guys who are totally unavailable. And like, I can't trust men to then like reconnecting with Trevor. And it's funny. I've noticed I have quite a few women that reconnect with someone from their past who work with me. And I'm curious what that's about. I don't know that I've quite made the connection. And then to see you like, like move through your fears, just like look them head on and to kind of just be holding your hand along the way. Like sometimes I have to pinch myself that this is what I get to do. And I'm just so thankful that you're also open and willing to share that. I think that like that to me doesn't go unnoticed. It's like, it speaks volumes that I have you and, and the women that I work with like willing to come here and say, I'm happy to share about this really personal, vulnerable journey if it's yeah. gonna help someone else. Thank yeah, you. because we know, we know what we've gone through. We know the beauty and the love that comes from it and our trust in you. And I'm so, so happy if people can see this and feel that same fear that I felt if I can help anyone get through that in any way like you know yeah. I've sent many of people your way <laughs> and you you know, like, yes. I'm not the expert <laughs> um but I know who is oh <laughs> uh, thank you so so much You're I so love fun. this I love you love you Oh, for having me and I'm happy we can share this. Yes. Kate, okay, well, we're going to get off stream, but stay online. Okay. <laughs>